Hello YouTube. Welcome to this edition of Locked Out, where we're detailing the Southern Pick, which is part of the uh, Ace Lock series. Alright. Now let's pick up where we left off, and uh, we'll just start by detailing a little bit about Southern and, and what they sent. Now, this pick was pretty damned expensive, especially compared to the three picks that I got um, from from China. But uh, anyway, if I can get this out of here. There. Now. Oh, what do you know? I put the extra one in there anyway. Actually, that's a different size. It might not even be the right one. Well, we'll find out. Anyway, when you buy this thing from Southern, it'll come in a nice little box and they'll they'll throw this in and I'm not sure exactly why they throw this in but I guess they just do um, they probably copyrighted it or something like that doesn't say they have but I'm not gonna make it easy for you to read the whole thing I'm just gonna kind of summarize what all this says especially in the um, in the tips section I'm sure if you want to pause it you can you can read that part but uh, this is just the instructions and, and tips. And some of the tips are pretty good. Some of them, I, I don't know, I, I don't really agree with at all. But one of the cool things they send you, just gratis with the pick, is this thing. And it, it is a, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the name of this tool is, but you use it to figure out exactly what your bidding is on a tubular lock. Uh, for instance, if you use this pick here to say get into this lock, you can f you can use this right here. You can tighten this chuck, and you can lock these pins into place. And then you can take this little tool right here, and you can hold it up next to the various depths and write down all the way around uh, uh, what the uh, what the depths are and you can figure out what the uh, what the the cut depths are and that's what this little gauge here is is for but the real star of the show is is right here it's this little uh, southern pick it's not very big uh, it's actually a little bit shorter than the uh, than the other ones uh, and I'm torn here. I'm really torn between saying that this pick is better made and it's nowhere near as well made. Um, and I'll show you a little bit of why. Um, this isn't really part of why, but I've got to take the handle off anyway. So The handle is really the best thing about this pick in comparison to the other ones just directly because the handle is larger. It's quite a bit larger and it's this soft kind of really nice smelling rubber. You know, if you ever get a if you ever get a radio controlled car from the uh, from the hobby store or something like that and you get that nice brand new rubber smell that the the tires will give you or maybe you get a new shower curtain and it and it and it smells like a new rubber. Well, that's exactly what this smells like. So it's you know, it's good for the extra money, just for the smell alone, you know. But uh, anyway, here's the size of the handles relative to each other. And remember, this is this is rubber. It's it's hard rubber, but it's still rubber. And it's a hell of a lot softer than milled aluminum. And uh, it's also a little bit bigger around. And believe it or not, that makes a really big difference, especially if you've got large hands. Uh, this thing is really narrow. And if you're sweaty at all, you're going to totally lose your grip on this. Um, it's uh, it's 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 uh, it's not that great as far as you know usability. But I'm sure if you really wanted to go to the expense, you could mix up a little batch of of something and then just kind of dip it in there and do it like a candle. You just keep dipping it and building up on this on this handle here a, a rubberized coating. I'm sure you could probably pretty easily figure out a way to do that. But uh, that's if you're 
interested in in going to that depth with it. Of course, I might be, but I'll go to it later. Anyway, there's the cap. Here's the little washer. That's another big difference between... I don't know why I keep putting this up. I'm just going to go ahead and keep referencing it because I've got to compare now. Now, in the Huck Pick, this little washer, the, the function that it serves is actually this magnetic ring. And it does the same thing in the Huck Pick that this washer does in the Southern Pick. It's there so that when you've got all these pins pulled up to, you know, different uh, different depths, you can use this ring to just kind of knock them all down. And that's really all that it does. I mean, that's all it's for. It <laughs> It's not that great. It's not that big a deal as far as a feature is concerned, but it is nice that it's that it's a magnet and it'll stay up there while you're busy doing this because otherwise it'll slip down and that can actually interfere with the um, with the uh, with the action. But uh, anyway, this washer just slides down and it evens out all the stuff so you can get to it. All right, now now for the money shot, we're gonna take the chuck apart and the chuck is really the most this is really the singular most important. Uh, uh, thing about this pick is the fact that it has this adjustable chuck and it's got these it's actually really well made too this is a solid piece of you know I think it's steel and uh, it's really uh, actually well made alright and the huck pick comes with uh, one of these tools which is really the only one you need and we're gonna get to why it's the only one you need and it's kind of pisses me off but uh, anyway it's the only one you need and you only need it to take that off and then all these things just come kind of flying out of there uh, and this is the central body of the uh, of the southern pick and it's really my least favorite part of the entire shebang really the way they made this is just crappy compared to the huck um, you can see on the end here, I'm going to get this really close so that you can see. You see how thin these walls are? I'm, I'm, going to get, I'm going to get a little something up here so that I can point effectively. You see how... Uh, Alright, there we go. You see how thin these walls are here? They're so thin in a lot of spots that they've already split. And they were split like that from the factory. They came from the fact that this is really thin. I'd say it's a fraction of a millimeter. I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, but you can see where it's actually, and you see, you see this wear hole here? That's not wear. That just came like that from the factory. It's, it's already pitted in here. So this thing has got a lifespan, and it's not a very big lifespan either. It's not, I don't think it was ever intended to be, um, something that you have for a while. <laughs> I think they intended this to be maybe two or three uses before it would break and there's a few reasons why and the crappiness of this is just one. Another one is the fact that, you, okay, you remember how in the uh, in the Huck pick we have this set screw on the back that's underneath one of these and you don't even have to pull all this art to get to it, you just have to lift this one up all the way you have this set screw here. Well, that set screw is so that you can pull out the center pin in here. Because the center pin, believe it or not, is pretty damn vulnerable. It breaks. The center pin that this southern pick came with broke after my fourth attempt to pick this lock. Um, my fourth attempt out of four attempts to pick this lock with the southern pick as it came in the mail, with out of four attempts to do it, only one was successful. Uh, and then on the fourth attempt, this center pin right here snapped. It broke. And as you can see, there's no screw hole. And the reason there's no screw hole is because there's no set screw. And the fact, and the reason there's no set screw is because the way they held that pin, this used to be a hollowed out trough. It's filled with solder now. I'll get the, I'll get the zoom going here so you can see the modification that I made to this just to fix what was happening. 
Oh, okay. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can... All right. We've got shitty lighting here, and it's a big piece of metal, and this is not the world's best camera, so... All right. Now, the trough that you can see in here, this trough was already there. And this is how they inserted the pin. And when they inserted the pin, the crappy one that broke off, when they inserted that, it fucking... It, it, it didn't have anything holding it in here except machining. That's all that was holding it in there. So when it broke, I had to get an awl, which is a leather working tool. I got an awl. Actually, no, I didn't get an awl. Well, I got an awl, and the awl didn't work. I got a center punch, because I got, you know, I was being lazy. I didn't want to get out my center punches. But when the awl broke, I finally got out a center punch. And I set this thing up on a table like this, and I put the center punch down in that little trough like that. And I held it like this, and I got a hammer, and I beat on the center punch until I pounded what was left of that stupid freaking pin out of here. Uh, and then I decided, well, I want to try and modify this. And uh, that was before I just got pissed off because of all the, you know, the, 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 how thin this is and how crappy it's done. I just didn't really want to, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do anything else with it. I mean, it, it's just, it's just crap all the way around. But anyway, uh, I filled this trough with solder, just regular old, you know, electronic solder. I filled this trough with solder, and then I put that pin in, and I put some more solder around it. And of course, it was all sloppy and crap. It was it was mounded up here, so I had to sand all this down and smooth it out. And that and the new pin, the pin that I replaced the busted one with, uh, which came out of the um, which came out of the uh, the huck the huck kit. Uh, that I got through the mail. Um, I pulled one of the pins out of the huck, out of the huck kit, and replaced this with that. And then it eventually fell out because the solder just can't really hold it in that well. But um, I've done all kinds of stuff to try and save this this tool, and it's just you know it's for all sorts of reasons it's just crap. Also, the length of these two barrels is pretty damn crucial. See. The amount that you can actually shove this into a lock, some some of these tubular locks actually have a warding area around them to where you've got to use a longer than average key just to get into the lock and 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 get to this part. You've got to go through a ward that's you know this long. Oh, okay. That's why it's not fitting. It's the wrong damn size. But anyway. You've got to go through a ward that pokes out maybe this far from the face of the lock. You've got to go through a ward that you won't be able to get through if you've only got this much room to work with. Because this is this is where the two set screws go, and the two and you can see how much shorter the southern the southern uh, body is. You can see how much shorter it is than this. Um, that can be pretty crucial, actually. Uh, so I decided to take uh, uh, the best components of both of these and make something new. But anyway, that's the Southern broke down. And then I'll get into exactly what I did to make the pick that actually works best out of, these, out of all these components. But uh, this is the uh, Southern breakdown. And for the money... If all you need is, is uh, uh, something that's going to work once or twice, sure, go ahead, buy the Southern, because that's pretty much all you're going to need. Uh, but it will break after one or two times. Uh, either the pin in the middle will break, or this stuff here that just milled really thin, that will break, or it will start breaking down anyway. I mean, just about every single one of these troughs here is notched you know because there's already some wear and like I said it comes from the factory like this you know a lot of these are already notched see that little notch in that one and that one and that one and that one and that one I mean 
it's it's not a, it's not the world's best quality product by any means so the bottom line is if you're just gonna get one thing you know get the southern pick but don't expect it to win any longevity prizes um, as a side note you'll see that this thing that I've been gesturing with is also a southern tool this is a broken key extractor um, I was really impressed with the quality of this tool. I mean, if I was going to make myself a tool that I wanted to have for a long time, this would be it, right here. Um, you can see that my unskilled ass kind of ruined it a little bit, but it's okay because it still makes a great pointing tool. And uh, But they went to a lot of effort to make this a really high quality product. This is three um, layers of spring steel. It's actually spring steel in here. Um, it's three layers of it. And, and the three layers are in the handle, and of course the, the, the one goes out to the middle here. But this is a very, very, very solid product. Um, it, it was about five bucks, but it was worth every penny. Um, even though it's, it's damaged now. Um, I will never throw this away. It's a damn, it's a, it's a badass piece of metal, if nothing else. But uh, anyway, that's the uh, that's the southern pick, and then we'll get into the really nitty gritty, juicy stuff here uh, next segment. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.